<laughs> Alright guys, here we're talking about Pushing Daisies Season 1, Episode 7. Why do we need so much honey? I, uh, I don't know, I have a lot of questions about this, this, <laughs> this, this whole honey gathering uh, expedition. I feel like what are they bees need... Those urban, urban bee keeper reclaimers or something? Some, Some bullshit. Stupid thing? Yeah. I think bees need so much flowers that she I don't, I don't that, think yeah. they can even plant enough. Like... Mm. She says, e e each bee needs a thousand flowers before it can return. And I'm not sure of the logistics of, like, could a bee fly off the top? Of, like, how high is that building? Hmm. Like, and, like, you know, go down there and then go back up and do its business? Not that it matters so much to me. Ah, uh, you're, you're peeling back the layers of reality and ruining the show. I do what I can. <laughs> I try. <laughs> or, or how much honey is produced that she can make these little, uh, you know, pie cups. It's a thing. Like, thematically, right, he gave her the bees, and now she's giving back the honey to feed into the thing, and then he's giving her uh -huh. the, uh, the menu item to put the thing, and then she's, you know, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole stupid thing that they're doing. Yeah, it wasn't the dumbest thing in the episode, but, but it called, was... Uh, what, what are they called? Pie cups? I think pie cups. I remember thinking that, that it should be flipped. Cup pies. Cup pies? Cup pies. Hmm. I'll allow it, and I, I would totally eat one. I'm oh, no. They're, they, uh, a major problem with this show is I'm watching it late at night, and it's full of pie. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I want pie. It's horrible. I indeed want pie. Luckily, I have no pie, so I've been doing okay. It's, I keep having to go out to 7-Eleven and get little pies. It's horrible. Getting all those pies. Uh, so, like, the dumbest thing in the episode, real quick, so before I Great. forget it, is, is sure. uh, there's a flashback to young Ned, and he's in his, like, orphanage home, and they're all, like, a bunch of boys in one, one room with their beds, and, like, Digby sleeps on his bed, <laughs> like, you know, under the, f on, on top of the cover, so, like, sure. there's a little bit of separation, there's a barrier. but it just seems like, I'm like, God, man, I know you're a child, but <laughs> what the fuck? Aside from, like, how did you even get your dog into an orphanage, sure. and, and it's just like, yeah, that's cool, he has a dog, what do you mean? Yeah, who feeds it? I eats like chopped liver or some shit. This kid has a rabbit. What do you mean? But like, whenever you're that close to something that you could you could end the life of. Oh yeah, yeah. With just a glance, a touch. No. <laughs> do you ever put your hands outside the covers? Cause fuck. Reach down, scratch your foot, accidentally touch your dog. Oh no. No, I know, and that's gonna be that. There's there's an there's an undercurrent of that throughout the entire show. Yeah. Stuff he does with Chuck, stuff he does with, with, with Digby, you're going to be like, no! He's no, obviously a psychopath <clears throat> who doesn't care about these people. Well, and like, <clears throat> there are moments where it's uh, planned, and it's like part of the drama. Oh no, he has to say everybody can't touch her. Well, you know, what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But then there's a bunch of other incidental stuff where it's like, why are you, why have a protocol? I am not wearing a bell. That, that like little thing or whatever. Yes. And I'm like, I would wear a hundred bells. You could kill me by yeah, touching me. to live. <laughs> to live, yes. To live, I'd wear a bell. Thank you. I'd, I'd wear my beekeeper suit like all the time. Right. Oh, I'm a germaphobe. I wear ah, this thing. What are you doing? I'm looking for ET. What are you doing, bitch? Ha ha ha. Pie time. Yeah. Right? Just walk or around. Or just like not work in the same kitchen because fuck. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like her working in the kitchen and stuff like that, but I don't like. Um, I like it too, but as a, like, I don't when like I think her constantly. If I were dying. her, yeah, anytime <clears> you have to enter tiny thoroughfares with, where people could be coming and going at the same time, and one of the people who could touch you could and kill you, kill you, I would be like, yeah. <clears throat> and everyone else, you know, must be like, why is it such a big deal? That, I work that on this touch? side of the island. You work on that side of the island. Or one of you's in in New York, and one of you's in L.A., and you're both superheroes. Sure, we could Hancock this bitch. Thank you. I was gonna say. Hopefully, you get this reference. Otherwise, I'll sound yeah. retarded. <laughs> this episode's about smelling. Yes, and, I, I love and it has some Paul Rubens it. in it. Yes, which I love. Pee Wee himself. Pee Wee reprising his role in in a weird way from Mystery Men as like a disgusting freak, um, <laughs> but he's great. Um, I like him, and he's good in this. Better run and just goes off the thing or whatever. His stupid goggles that make his eyes all big. Like mm -hmm. they're going for something. I feel like they're hitting it. I like this. Whenever there's flashbacks to like, and this guy liked smelling this, and that guy liked smelling that, and they had a rivalry, and they did a stupid thing, and I'm like, but they okay. both have the most powerful sniffers. They have crazy powerful noses. It's like so. It makes me like smile. Like ah, it's so dumb. I love it. This is yeah. who who would ever do this? This is great. I had no memory of this episode though. No, me neither. It was very strange. I may have only seen two episodes of this show in my entire life. I I recall really liking this show when it was originally on. Yeah. But I I've, I've a couple times now I've been like I don't remember this episode at all. Yeah. Do you think perhaps uh, everyone like this is the kind of show that everyone sees a few episodes of and thinks it's the greatest thing ever, inexplicably stops watching it so that the show fails and then says, wait, no, that show is good. Bring it back. I never once watched <laughs> it on TV. Okay. Uh, it was only after a friend's done. sister w was okay. would, would uh, like be like, "Oh, this one came out." And she would give me like you know the DVD R rip. You got to hook up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was how I watched it. So yes, I am one of the reasons why it got canceled. I forget what network it was on or whatever. I don't know if you know. Oh, it's one of the primes like ABC oh, yeah. or 
Yeah, it's tragic because it is so interesting and so unique and so not the normal thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, I guess I can see a mainstream audience not clicking with it or whatever, but um, epic battle here. Indeed. Turns out the good smeller, what should we call him? We'll call him good smeller. Good smeller and bad smeller? Yeah. But, 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 it, but in the end, it's flipped. Evil smeller. Evil smeller. Is uh, faking his own death. Or Shit like smeller? Faking <laughs> Shit smeller and pleasant smeller. Okay. Um, <laughs> sewer smeller and pleasant smeller. The guy who wrote the book, the guy in the suit, the yes. pretentious asshole guy who likes smelling good things, who thinks you can craft everything to you know in your life for smelling to make it the best thing ever, uh -huh. writes a book, the you know the 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 scent of success, I think. I believe that is um, the name. And uh, to drum up sales for the book, he's like you know faking attempts on his life to like kill him and all that stuff. Yeah. So his plan originally was, oh, I'll just find this book that was the booby trap that will kill me, yes. um, and you know I'll report that, and this and that will get me some hype. But his assistant opens the book, scratches the and sniffs and dies uh, yeah. through an explosion, which was like in the book, in a like like <laughs> where was the like what. <laughs> One of the pages, Scratch and Sniffs, had a chemical in it that would cause an explosion somehow? I, I took it as, as like that part would, uh, would, would start the spark that would, that yeah. would, that would ignite the, the explosion. Whatever was the thing. But like yeah. what, I don't know what it actually was or how that made sense. Because like when you look at the book, they you're picturing like, oh, it had a huge <clears throat> spine or something that would be full of dynamite, but it didn't. No. Uh, no. So I don't know where the explosives actually He were. like was mixing chemicals and putting it into a thing and making a thing and pouring it and letting it congeal. Because when you see her body, she is 100% combusted. Oh, no, yeah. She is like a tree. She is like barking. Yes. She is done. Yeah. It's very like a Beetlejuice almost, her particular. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of them have been, but this is like the most. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like full on makeup and full on prosthetics and stuff like that. Yeah, like a body cool. suit of burn. Yes, a, a, a burn suit. And it looks decent, but it's not like it's not like great. It's weird yeah. almost. <clears throat> where where when they when they talk to her, she's like still smoking somehow, and I'm like, how'd that happen? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, like like bringing her back also brings back the fire <laughs> that was yeah. killing her. No, I don't know. Um. Again, though, it's it's like a level of thing that I like, but yes. It doesn't fit in with the rest of the show. That's not how burn people really look, right, I assume? No. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a lot of burned dead bodies. They don't get thicker. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you not? No. No? Hmm. Weird. No. Weird. But it was it was a decent effect, especially in this uh, this climate of of a humor in the air yeah. of, of fantasy and whimsicalness that they have in this episode, in this show. It's like it, striking it, it and fun. It yeah. played, yeah. So, uh... We we move on. We we have a, a series of of interesting smell related gags and, and <laughs> stuff like how he sniffs. Uh, I think he sniffed Ned in the humorous way, where he's like all up in his smell. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the weird sudden movements to like smell. Yeah. And and him like you know him like naming all the smells that Emerson smells like, and then going, "You're a knitting detective." And he goes, "What? <laughs> like what? Yeah. How'd you do? How'd you do that? Or whatever." Yeah. And they, yeah. Can, and they can both smell the death. On, uh, I know. On our girl here, so that's that's interesting. Well, and that's our button too. Mm -hmm. Paul Rubens is in the car with her, like. I felt bad because he stole. Well, he stole the mom's sweatshirt. Yeah. So I'm like, how much of her scent is even on that? She's permanently imprinted on it. And then I was like, well, the mom's dead. Can he smell through time? <laughs> like, she wasn't wearing that sweatshirt. The joke is, oh. but she wasn't wearing that sweatshirt when she when she died. But he's smelling a dead woman's sweatshirt. So does he smell the death? He loves the smell of death. Who doesn't? I don't. Oh, really? Yeah. You're weird. I gotta stop putting dead things in your walls. Uh, I know that smell is. Yeah, I hate it. I thought you loved it. I live in death. But yeah, I like the idea that Paul Rubens is, is this, uh, and I can't. He's gonna I, come back. I can't I'm even like, recall him coming I, back. So I'm I, like, I didn't think there was really anything a like running that. bad guy. Yeah, where things like reoccurred like that. Because we've had several characters that you thought might come back for something. There's a guy that sells the happy drug uh -huh. to her. There's like different things like that. The tincture and man. A lot of those haven't even come back. So it's 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 crazy. And to she's me actively to using those every day. So I it's like, know. how's that happening? And he was gonna be a love interest, and there was gonna be a whole thing there. He may still come back. There's, there's a few more episodes for this season. Along, and, and a and a but, season uh, two, and so. a season two, but um, yes, they. I don't think that they've really done anything. You have your core cast, and then like one-offs per week. So mm -hmm. this is a whole thing. Indeed, it is. All uh, right. So what else? I feel there's a whole swatch of this episode that I'm I'm forgetting here. We get a lot of stuff with the ants returning to being a thing. There's like a musical number. This is a musical number that I did not really enjoy as much. Because yeah, it's kind of flat. Yeah, it was kind of like whatever, and it's raining. Olive whatever. in the fucking mermaid outfit. Yes. I was like, Jesus Christ, woman. 
Like, like, and that's a very revealing her, outfit. Her tits are straight out. It is fucking hilarious. Yeah. And she has to hop around because she, her like legs are like together. Yeah. So there's just these barely caged tits just flopping around. I loved it. I, I, I'm more and more. I'm, I'm noticing just how much makeup Olive wears. Ah, yeah. It's, it's like almost too much. Yeah. Like she ends up looking almost porcelain like like mm. her skin is is too flawless that it's creepy. Oh no. Okay. I'm like, how old are you? How old are you, bitch? She's older. We we've established. She's only ten that. years older though than, than most yeah. of the characters, and like that's not crazy old. No. I think she's just she's just a queen with the makeup. Uh oh. I don't know whose decision it is, if it's hers or like the departments where they're like, I picture she, looks she older. comes in with like Take it on. perfectly done makeup uh, but and then the makeup team goes, All right, here's your makeup. Oh. You're joking, right? No, it's what oh. I picture. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, they're obviously trying to, like, hide the age gap and make it whatever. Um, I noticed that she comes off as being a little older since we talked about it mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But, um, and yeah. they, they constantly reference live, her, like, your best ticking life. clock and this and that. Her biological clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's even established in the show if she's supposed to be the same age as them, so I don't know why they'd want to hide it so much. There's no reason for really any of them to be the same age, except for, the, uh, you know, Ned, obviously, and her went to school together and grew up, yeah. but they could be uh, they could be years apart even. Exactly. Because they grew up on the same street. Doesn't you, mean they're yeah, the same, uh, you can be friends with someone uh, sure. on, on the street who's not the Impossible. same age as you and all that stuff. Um, and, and Emerson could be any age. Oh, yeah, Emerson's a 400-year-old Time Lord. Well, it doesn't get <laughs> Season 2! Season, season two. 2! Shut up! <laughs> oh, but Emerson's still my favorite character. I, I, oh, his love of pop-up books and his whole thing. Yeah. I'm taking these for evidence. <laughs> and these. The pop -up books. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and at the end, he's like, ooh, <laughs> like watching them and stuff uh -huh. like that. No, he continues to be good. I forget if he had a good uh, line. Or yeah, no, no. Oh, God, yeah. I, t I got cleaned up in exactly the amount of time it takes to get cleaned up. You just slow. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. That was amazing, his whole thing. Well, how'd you get cleaned up so fast? <laughs> Because not only did he went home to a different location, yeah. got back there and cleaned in a new suit, yep. and she has just got out of the shower. And he's like impeccable. He's always got his style. In fairness to her and how slow she may be, Ned was already clean as well, so he must have hit the shower first. Let's not give. Uh, let's not take anything away from that awesome line from Emerson. I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> the smell of my success. Did I say scent of my success? No, you said scent. We have to re-record it. What? You said scent. It's called smell, though. Oh, then re-record. Well, take it from the top. Nah. Uh, but I like I like the episode. Did I like, you like the, the exploding car and like the yeah. how com like how complicated he made like a lot of this stuff. Where I'm like, that's hmm. a really weird way of doing this. I guess it's you made it that complicated to really try to, um, you know, throw the blame on your former uh, partner slash smeller. Yeah. But it just it seems so outlandish. But that's the name of the show, so it's super outlandish. He has like a chamber where you get like cleansed of all your smells, but he can feed uh, poisonous or like you know, explosive yeah. gas into it instead or whatever, right? He's uh, I like that this just escalated. Like you've created this whole epic history. Like someone writing a book about how you can use aromatherapy to, to improve your life is the most boring thing in the world. Yeah. But they create this epic backstory with a with a like like long rivalry and then like attempts on on someone's life. But it's mm -hmm. just been escalating Columbo style, where this like criminal struggling to like keep it all together and make their plot work. And it he's seems like to the be Mr. Working. Glass of smelling. Yes. <laughs> he's, yes. He has like a turtleneck. Yeah. He's all like, ha ha. The opening shot of, with that explosion uh, takes out a part of the wall, which you can then see the different outsides throughout <laughs> the episode. So, like, there's night, there's clouds, yes. there's blue sky. I liked that. How uh -huh. there's, there's no reference to covering it, but he makes you come in and get, like, like spray cleaned of your germs and smells, sure, but sure. there's an opening to the outside uh -huh. fucking world this whole time. For some reason, I thought that there was still some, you know, something blocking the air there, but I guess it makes no sense. Because at the end, he gets defeated in kind of a dumb way, uh -huh. where like, hey, you know, Oscar reversed the pumps, and it's a thing, yeah. and then he somehow gets all this dirt on his face that makes no sense. There's a whole, there's a whole thing. Bad smells yeah. are dirty. The smells alone should overwhelm him, though. He should be like, oh, I've been in this uh -huh. chamber. They call me Mr. Glass, <laughs> Mr. Smelly Glass, Mr. Anti-Ass Smell. Mm. Smell of my success. I like I like most things in the book. I like the pop up book owner guy. I like the uh, like. Do you think yeah. I made a book on how to make bombs and then use my own book to attack somebody else who I didn't like? Are you serious? And they go, huh? Okay. I think that we would get, be the perfect thing to do because they've. Like, I know. I no wonder. Would expect that. I wonder how often that happens where someone's like, "Do you really think that I would publicly say that I wish he was dead and then do this with a poison that could be traced back to me and then kill them?" And, and the cops are like, "Yes, I." 
I, I, I just said you're under arrest, and they're like, fuck. <laughs> like, I, I would imagine it is the opposite, where like anyone, people are framed constantly, and uh, cops are just like, got all the evidence I need. Got him. <laughs> yeah. Yep. See, he makes hemlock. Exactly. Got him. I noticed this in, in, you know, growing in your backyard, ma'am, and you have a mortar, you know, pistol and mortar here. Yeah. You're exactly. going to jail. I, I like the reference to uh, Ned getting intimate on a, on, on a bearskin rug. Yes, I That's would love to have seen that. <laughs> yes. Because what do you think would even happen? And how would you explain any of it? A, and a twisted... Well, this... If you don't stop touching something for the minute, what happens? Exactly. So, like, he lays... He's on a rug, potentially pinned down by this girl, and, and it comes alive. And, and if he can't wrestle her off or whatever and yes. touch this thing again in a minute, the girl dies and a floppy bear stays alive... Nice. It's interesting. I it, it raises a lot of questions for me about like just leather jackets and anything made from anything. Because the bearskin rug, the only thing different about it is that it has the head still attached or whatever. I right? think that is the difference that's that is the, needed. That's but I guess that's you where don't the magic need works any or organs or guts or any of that shit. I can't. I do, I can't imagine, right? Because then he should be able to touch like a stuffed, uh, you know, bird or uh -huh. like a taxidermied animal and somehow bring that back to life. The implications of that are, are are like terrifying, but it's still funny. They are, <laughs> and I I wonder. If it's not just a throwaway joke and they put no thought into it at all, because that's my assumption. It, it really can't. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it would have terrifying implications. The idea has no legs for this that. Like <laughs> <laughs> do bearskin runs? <laughs> do bearskin rugs have legs? Yes. Oh fuck! I thought you were doing a thing. I was not. You're just high as a kite. I thought it just has like it, so. It has a like bearskin rug has, is it has the claws and like the yes. limbs of the floppy bear. Uh -huh. I thought it was like a big rectangle of like the main part of the bear. Uh, a cheap one. Oh. A, a real one is every is they cut you all from the, the stomach skin. down and they peel the whole thing out pretty much. Ugh. And they let all the bear drip out. Well, that all gets pulled out by someone getting paid minimum wage, but everybody else, they get paid top dollar. Hmm. Bears are disgusting. Yeah. I like, um, <laughs> we're going to have her go in there. Well, you can't go. Well, I'm going to testify. Well, aren't they going to say, like, show me some ID? I forgot my ID. Well, now I really need to see ID because you look like that dead girl <laughs> and all that yeah. stuff. And then Ned's like, well, if that happens, I'll just be like, what, is this a police state? And he can't even, like, deliver it right. What is this, a police state? He just says it so flatly or whatever. <laughs> Something about that. Like, th th you know, the show has a lot of ambient music or whatever. Uh -huh. But if I could clip just him being like, what is this, a police state? It would be this, like, hilarious thing. Hmm. It didn't hit me the same way it hit you. No? Oh, my God. It's so dumb because that's his attempt of being like, well, I'll just fix the problem by saying this thing that's that's pathetic in this pathetic way or something like that. This is how he delivers and, all lines. And Emerson goes like, yeah, no, we're not. You're not coming. It's fine. And like, no, or whatever. Yeah. Oh. She should not go anywhere almost no, all the time. No, I know. She should wear her like Jackie O like fake like you know sunglasses and Pretty whatever. Pretty much cuz she's all not too far from where she grew up. Just normal people could see her. Random ass Anyone people. that grew up with with her also grew up with Ned. Any of them could pop in at any time and be like, "Oh, hi, Ned. Oh man, I haven't seen you in 50 years." Da, 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 da. Wait, I saw the news. She died, right? Cause, exactly. Cuz like you would think like she made the news, but like how many people make the news? Random girl dies on a boat, random girl dies on a plane. Yeah. Things happen, right? But if you if you knew the person, you'd be like, "Oh no, I went to high school with them." They, they, they're the famous girl who died on the, uh, on the, uh, on the cruise ship. Yes. And it's like, it's you. Oh that's no. A, that's a town legend. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, anything else you got in this one? Got no. Like I said, I'm looking forward to this Paul Rubens, uh, Rubens, 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 uh, coming back. I would like it if weird. he never comes back. <laughs> I, oh. I like him and I would want him to come back, but I think it'd be funny if they just set this up and you never see him again. That is funny, but I feel like they're doing it for a reason and he's going to come Certainly. back. Um, yeah, that'll be an, an an interesting thing to dabble with. What would even be your thing though? Like I smell like like you are a scent doctor essentially. You are a man about smells. Like a witch doctor. This is a for smell sense. that I've never smelled before. And and then what do you go from there? I must discover what this new smell is. He's like, a person is not like <coughs> do you never discover a new smell? Is that is that your thing? I think they are so into smelling and she has this like the smell of resurrection like that's crazy, right? So this is a crazy smell that smells like death, but not like death, and he can't figure it out. He's fascinated. He's enchanted, enthralled, engorged, throbbing. Like he's super. He like wants to get to no, the bottom. No, he's definitely of this. into it. But I mean, yes. what what does getting to the bottom? How would you even get to the bottom of it? By stealing her sweater and stalking her. I guess, but so, at no point <laughs> do, do they ever out loud would they be like. I am dead. Here is the proof. Or oh, I no, guess no, yeah. I guess he could stalk her and see Ned bring someone back to life. Maybe 
I don't know what's going to happen because I forget this entire thing, which means I never finished season one originally, if he does come back mm. in the next couple episodes. I think season one is shorter. I want to say nine episodes. I don't know that for a fact. I thought I they were it's... both the same, but I could be wrong. I don't know anymore, I think, but I didn't you know, take note of it on purpose. I, I, I just remember glancing through. Mm. Um, no, but if he comes back, so like my issue is that every episode's geared around its particular new one-off character's yeah. particular thing. Got a one-armed man who escaped from prison to go visit Windmill Town, right? Uh -huh. It's this crazy thing. If that character ever came back, like you can't go back to Windmill Town, that's, that's ridiculous. Or maybe it's not. Yeah. But we can't have another episode about smelling everything or whatever, right? It has to, he has to interject into another situation, right? And he would. It's more interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that's this episode of Pushing Daisies. Let us know in the comments what you thought about it. Don't die in a fire, and we'll see you next time. Hello, Internet. I just love watching Just Taggers. If you've enjoyed this video as much as I have, click that subscribe button. <laughs> uh, peace out, homies.